starting to feel really uncomfortable with boyfriends, 32M, rather unusual fetish. I, 27F, have been dating, 32M, for about 4 months now. Prior to this we'd been friends for about 2 years, and right before going official he confided in me a pretty unusual kink, at least I never heard of it. He gets off to videos of girls having their hair cut. That's really the only fetish he has and the only thing he's interested in sexually. Okay, I thought, no problem. How tame is that compared to some kinks am I right? No biggie. We became boyfriend and girlfriend. But I soon realized it ran much deeper than that after finding the erotica he writes and the specific videos he searches out to masturbate to. He's into specifically non-consensual haircuts. Like the person in the chair completely passed out and unaware, or actively fighting, screaming, and crying. He doesn't watch conventional porn at all. His porn equivalent is movie scenes of said girls having their heads shaved completely or any other videos he can find that resemble the above criteria. He will sit there and be super turned on and masturbate to it like regular porn, then go on about his day. It was a little weirder but as long as it was purely role play and for entertainment purposes only I guess it was fine. But then it began interfering with our sex life. He never had much of a sex drive before, but after a couple months he became completely disinterested in having any sex at all. He only wanted me to either cut his hair, in the same consensual non-consent way, or have me non-consensually cut the hair of a hired third party. And this is where things got really really strange. He specified whoever that hypothetical third party was needed to be young. Like, as young as possible while still being legal. I asked him if he wanted there to be any sex involved and he said no, he just wanted me to cut off all her hair while he masturbated watching. I asked how young we were talking and he said in high school, 16 or a little older, we're in Mississippi where the age of consent is 16. I said no and he tried to negotiate with me for a little bit before giving up. After another couple weeks I found out he specifically searches out head shaving videos where the subject is underage. He also writes erotica for me to read where the subject is just barely 18 but still in high school, his description not mine, but then I discovered the erotica he doesn't share with me on his computer and the subject is usually 14 or 15. So the kicker was last week when I found a post he made to Reddit on Amy the asshole. It was linked to a throwaway account on his computer that he uses to lurk and contained a completely made up, thinly veiled erotic post about a 14 year old being forced to shave her head and then her 16 year old sister also being forced to shave her head. It grew quite popular and almost nobody caught on that it was BS because, again, his fetish is really uncommon. Luckily the mods there have a pretty keen eye for that stuff and eventually removed his account. But I had walked in the room while he was still writing and masturbating to it. He slammed his laptop down and acted like he didn't know where he was. I should again note that he has no sex drive outside of this kink. So basically I'm in a weird and super uncomfortable spot right now. I know what he's watching and masturbating to isn't porn, per se. None of the videos ever contain nudity or sexual content. He doesn't seem to have any interest in sex at all. He was a virgin until his 30th birthday because he didn't care, he just wanted his head shaved. But at the same time these are underage girls he's specifically searching out and trying to contract, and he goes to great lengths to hide that fact. It makes me uncomfortable, but I don't want to lose an otherwise good friend and partner. I almost wish I'd never found this out and we just stayed as friends because now I can't even look at him the same. I'm also scared if I break up with him he will know it's because of the fetish, he was super scared to tell me at first, and then will become very volatile and refuse to let me see the two dogs we share together. Help. TL, boyfriend is 32 and gets off exclusively to videos of underage girls having their hair cut. No nudity or sex involved but still makes me uncomfortable. Scared to lose him as a friend, scared to lose access to the dogs we share. Not sure what to do. My mom stole $6,000 from me claiming I owe it to her. First of all I'd like to say thank you to everyone who took the time to read my post and give me advice. There were too many comments to respond to, 
but I did read every one and my heart goes out to those who shared similar stories. A lot has happened in the past few days. The day after I posted, my mom broke the lock on my bedroom door and accused me of planning her RP and M murder in conjunction with my professor. Which is not only false, but so laughably outlandish that I finally called my university as many here suggested. Their police department got me out the same day and put me in a temporary shelter for two days before moving me temporarily to university dorms. My mom did put up a fight while I was leaving and accused me of being a SX worker. She claimed evidence of my illegal activities could be found on my computer, iPad, and phone, all currently in police custody. I did give the police permission to look through my devices and even gave them my passwords to everything, but the relentless daily interrogations have really worn me down. Thankfully my university gave me a loaner laptop so I am able to resume classes. I also found out that I won a scholarship I had applied for a while back and will be receiving a check worth $10,000 in the next week. Until I find permanent housing, I plan to put a hold on my mail so my mom can't get her hands on that money. Thank you so much to everyone who so graciously offered to donate but it looks like I will now be able to afford all of my tuition with a little left over. Of course. I still miss my mom and it takes everything in me not to respond to the emails she sends me asking if I'm safe and telling me she loves me. I'm trying to stay strong through it all, but I know deep down I did the right thing. There's still a lot that I have to figure out, like opening my bank account with no access to any official documents or phone, but I'm hoping to iron out those kinks within the next month or so and I'll post an update again when my situation is more stable. TL. Doctor the past few days have been mentally, physically, and emotionally draining but I got away from my mom and I'm looking forward to setting up my life independent of her. Nana died suddenly, grandpa all alone now. Hi all. My Nana died unexpectedly on Thursday and my grandpa is now all alone. My mother passed two years ago and once my Nana was pronounced dead he broke down and said I've only just stopped crying about your mother. I am incredibly incredibly worried about him. He is quite immobile due to severe joint pain and cannot walk far at all, nor drive, 88 years old. His wife was his everything. When I went over recently he said that he wanted everything thrown away and expressed how once he had everything materialistic, he came here as a refugee, he lost everything that meant anything to him. He has six grandchildren, all who love him deeply. We've been visiting him every day since Thursday. But I am so scared for him once people start to go back to work act. He cannot use technology very well, and can't really leave the house. Is there anything I can do to make him feel better? I love him so much and don't want him to just fade away. He also does not want to go into any kind of home. What is the best way to help someone grieve who has been with their partner for over 50 years? Is there anything I can do to make him feel better? I'm so sorry for your losses. First, I'd get your grandfather into a grief counseling group ASAP. I'd quote country you're in but if USA you can contact a local hospice, Google hospice near me, and ask about community resources available to support someone at high bereavement risk. They'll be able to point you to groups and services available locally, and they may also be able to accept your grandfather into their care. Hoping for the best for you and your family. Please consider using bereavement counseling for yourself as well. I don't know what country you're from so I don't know your social programs. If it's not feasible for him to move in with one of you and no one can move in with him, I would look for a full-time home health care worker. Depending on where you are some if not a majority of the costs can be picked up by the government. Also, while he doesn't want to move to an assisted living facility, you may be able to convince him to move because he won't be alone. He'll be surrounded by people. Living alone can get lonely. Sorry for your loss. My sister's boyfriend is secretly living at our house. My sister has been dating this guy for about a year. Erk he's 29. The second time my mom met him, he came over with my sister and started a fight with my mom about politics and called her out of her name multiple times. She told him to get out and that he wasn't allowed back. A while after, my sister begged her to let them stay there because they'd recently been evicted from their apartment and had nowhere to stay. 
She was screaming at my mom to let him stay but she wouldn't budge. Fast forward months later, my sister is living here, her BF was staying with a friend. He gets kicked out there and my sister starts secretly bringing him into her room to sleep and shower. The way our house is set up, he can easily come in and out with no interaction from our mom. He will take 45 plus minute showers every day just standing in there I guess because he's bald as well and doesn't even shave. I think he's taking full advantage as a big you to my mom. He also goes in the fridge, and I had a drink in there that I went to go get, it was gone. Neither my mom nor sister drink soda so I knew it was him. I am unable to drive so they both know to not eat the food that's mine. At this point I'm getting irritated at the disrespect towards us, but I'm scared to say anything because my sister uses her anger issues as an intimidation against us to not say anything or start problems. I really need an outside perspective on this. Just found out my girlfriend has been lying to me about her age. I've been with a woman for around two years and we live together. Last night we were discussing our upcoming Hitano wedding ceremony and she confessed to me that she is only 19 years old, despite having always told me she was 24. Naturally, we had a huge argument, but agreed to talk about it the next day. She's always been a bit vague about her timeline, but I just assumed her life has been a bit uneventful and never thought too much of it. There was no indication she was lying to me, and obviously I never had reason to check her birth certificate or anything like that. We've even visited her family multiple times, who were absolutely fine with me and our relationship. I love my girlfriend with all my heart, and my family and friends adore her too. She's hardworking and beautiful and kind, but at the end of the day, and as disgusting as it sounds, she's only a kid. Honestly I'm still in disbelief and can't even describe how bad my trust has been shattered, not to mention how stupid I feel. Really, I have no idea what to do. Any advice would be appreciated. TLDR, I've been with an amazing woman for around 2 years and we live together. She only just confessed she is only 19 and not 24, like she had told me. We had an argument about it and I don't know what to do. My boyfriend wants me to chip in on bills if I stay three nights a week. So I'm hoping to get some insight into how couples split expenses when they haven't fully moved in. Basically I usually stay over one or two days at my boyfriend's place which he owns. We recently spoke about me staying over more i.e. three nights a week to get a better idea on our compatibility. I do currently live at home with my parents where I am not paying bills but I do buy groceries and treat parents to lunch slash dinners, previously I have contributed a substantial amount to parents mortgage. My boyfriend mentioned if I am looking to stay over 3 nights then he said I should think about the bills and possibly chipping in on them in particular electricity, hot water and gas, internet. He is saying as I will be staying over. Both electric blankets will be on in the night for a few hours instead of one electric blanket and double the showers will be happening for those three days. His monthly bills for himself currently are electricity $50, hot water and gas is $50. I'm not exactly sure how to go about this as I'm not living there full time where we could go half. Would I go to effort of tracking each day I stay and calculate it as a percentage of the total bill? Keeping in mind he already spends $50 on himself on electricity, surely the bill wouldn't be exactly double. I usually do cook when I am over, buy ingredients as well as help him clean. So it's not like I totally do not contribute at the moment. I also am looking to save for a deposit to get my own place in the next year. Should I be chipping in on the hot water and gas slash electricity slash internet? If so, how do I go about it to calculate it? I think my wife is becoming attracted to her boss and he is reciprocating her affection. What should I do to tackle this issue? My wife started a job over a year ago at a small game company. She was ecstatic to get a real job where she could make an impact as a game designer. She got promoted to lead game designer a little while ago and is incredibly happy to be in charge of much of the project with a lot of folks working underneath her. Ever since she started, she's been working very closely with the CEO of the company. Some background on this guy. He's foreign, tall, charismatic, rich, and cultured. 
He's roughly 50 and is still relatively fit. Plays hockey as a hobby. He drives a top-of-the-line Tesla, lives in a very large and beautiful home, and he lavishes the office with fancy tech and regular meals slash gifts. She frequently comes home and tells me about his personal life. His wife, his stepkids. As well, she tells me about how he's been making $400,000 plus dollars since he was 20. She also regularly mentions how nice his house is and has been bringing up the idea of us upgrading to a larger house for the dogs. I hear about how this guy has basically been printing money from one business to the next and how he rides the stock market like a high roller. My wife also gets upset if her boss doesn't like her ideas. She'll be in a rut about it for a couple days or so and I can see how grumpy she gets. It weighs on her if she's not in his good graces. At the same time, she does think he's a bit silly sometimes with his requests for how the game should be. Sometimes she disagrees with his decisions and I make a comment like that sounds dumb and she gets defensive of him. Goes from I think his ideas are questionable to why are you attacking my boss all of a sudden? That was my red flag number one. She's being protective of him. Just because I agreed with her. It really didn't escalate past that for a while. Then she started buying new clothes, nothing terribly fancy. She is one of the managers, she might be trying to dress the part. Could be a warning flag though. I even suggested she may want to buy new clothes as a manager, so not super weird. They were professional and appropriate for the office, so I'm not super worried. Then she bought Vagisil body wash. A genital cleaning product for the shower. She doesn't take impromptu showers or anything when she comes home from work, but that was a bit odd. She told me I should use it on myself to clean my dick. I thought that was odd, I am very thorough with my genital cleaning, use a loofah, sometimes take two showers a day if it's hot out and I'm sweaty. I'm not a smelly guy by any measure, so it was an odd suggestion. This wasn't super odd but if you add all of these things together, might be a variable. Then we got invited over to her boss's house for dinner. I met some of her co-workers, a friend of the boss who owns a brewery, etc. They seemed nice. The boss dropped that he was making $400,000 a year when he was 20-something in the first real conversation we had. I couldn't help but be reminded of my family's advice, my family is not poor by any measure that rich people don't brag how much money they have, they keep it to themselves. The boss has a very nice house, but it wasn't like a super baller rich millionaire home. I make more than six figures, and if I wanted to, I could likely afford the mortgage for his home. I don't though, because I already have a nice and fairly large home and prefer to live within my means so that my wife and I can not only travel whenever we want, but also be financially dependent by the time we're 40. The other thing I noticed and overheard from conversation is that the boss's wife hasn't been around for several months. She's away, and the stepkids are all grown up. The boss mentioned he gets his better behaviors from his wife as he was entertaining us, but he also mentioned to his brewery friend that it was lonely in the empty house. After that weekend dinner, the following week, my wife came home with some new dresses and whatnot. These were a bit higher quality than anything she would normally buy. Her family had to work for everything they have, so she can be a bit thrifty on her clothes. She does her hair all the time now, spends a lot of time in front of the mirror before going to work, and these new dresses readily show a healthy spoonful of cleavage. These kinds of dresses are the kind she used to wear when we were dating. She switched to more comfortable clothes after we got married. Then, most recently, she asked if I wanted to go out for dinner. We went out to our local pub, had a good meal, chatted. Then she brought up a question. Do you want to go to Spain? It turned out her boss had asked if she and I would go to Spain with him on a work trip. Apparently her boss had suggested I come along or else it might be weird. No one else except some coworker who already lives in Spain would be with us. 
The trip is supposed to be sightseeing locations they want to put into the game but my wife admitted that her boss had wanted to go to Spain on his last vacation only a couple weeks ago and this was his excuse to go there. She also then hinted that it might be boring at times as we explore through random locations looking at how they would fit into the game. It felt like she was sort of trying to deter me from going. Instead of agreeing, I said, no, I wouldn't mind going to Spain, would be fun. I asked, do small game studios usually do all expenses paid travel to design game levels? She replied, oh, yeah, it's actually super common. I've read that a lot of folks are even saying it should be done more and involve the entire design team, even the 3D artists. I was also told the company had lots of money and could afford to do this. In my head, I'm thinking to myself that even if this is all normal, this is going to become a recurring thing. This boss has no qualms about up and traveling to various places around the world at any time because he has the money and resources to do so. Apparently it's a common complaint that he disappears for months sometimes and leaves the game project in a lurch. I'm not 100% comfortable with the fact that this guy who regularly goes out whining, dining, renting yachts, driving fancy cars, and visiting exotic locations, has decided he wants to take my wife along with him. Could it be research for the game? Sure. Maybe. It sounds to me more like he's flaunting his money and taking my young attractive wife along for the ride. I wonder why the boss's wife isn't coming to Spain with him. If you read online, folks will tell you you must trust your wife and if you have a good relationship, you'll realize that your wife is a boss professional and has to do all the work trips that will involve. I don't think those folks hear their honey going hey, I'm going to Europe and my boss will be whining and dining me throughout as we explore various beautiful locations, eat lots of food. It will also mostly be just us two. I feel like this might be an attempt to upgrade her lifestyle from the boss's end. Not that I would do this, but if I was trying to steal a man's wife and I had a crap ton of money, taking her out on insane vacations seems like a solid plan to win her affection. You hear about this stuff all the time, it starts as they work together closely and then it's he's so rich and charismatic, but instead of we need to work late, now it's we're going to Spain. All of this is despite the fact Covid is still raging across Europe. Don't get me wrong, my wife and I travel the world too. However, this guy's last vacation was taking a private 150-foot yacht with a built-in jacuzzi and fully weighted staff around the Mediterranean for a month, just for fun. They had some folks bail on the trip and no one batted an eye, they just carried on. When we go out to Spain, I feel like it's going to be so cushy and luxurious that it'll make our other vacations pale in comparison. This man's lifestyle isn't something we can hope to compete with. Even if this guy has pure intentions, I don't think it's going to change the fact that this will have to have at least some idealizing effect on my wife or her boss. What should my next steps be in resolving this? TLDR, my wife has been dressing up and talking about her rich boss a lot. Now her boss wants to take us to Spain for a work trip that is really a pleasure trip. What should I do in this situation? My boss's husband was sexually harassing me and I got let go as a result of telling her. This is a very long story but I'll try to keep it as to the point as possible. I'm a nanny due to layoffs at my job from COVID. I used a very popular nannying website to get my job, and everything was going great for the first few months. Both mom, 35F, and dad, 37M were working from their home offices and I watched the baby in the common area or outside at the local parks. When they had meetings or calls they would close their office doors to help with the noise levels from the baby and the toys and such. The job is just with one child so it's very simple for me, and just a 5 minute walk from my apartment so it seemed like a great fit. I was hired, given times and dates, and overall only communicated with the mom, my boss, for the first few months. When I took the baby outside of the house I would text the mom our whereabouts, concerns, etc. fast forward to the recent month or so. 
I noticed unusual behavior from the father beginning with his office door being open more than usual. He would linger after lunch time to chat with me alone, sit next to me on the couch when I was feeding the baby, and just began getting closer to me in general. He began asking questions about my personal life and relationship with my boyfriend, but I didn't think much of it considering I was becoming close to a family member to this family. I brushed everything off until he asked for my phone number. I have nannied before and I usually try to stay in contact with the mother as it looks weird to be texting and calling someone's husband as a young nanny. The father tried to give me his phone number but I quickly changed the subject and went out for a walk with the baby. Two days later he demands my phone and puts his phone number into my phone, and calls his number so he can save my phone number. I was shocked but I had no other choice but to play it off as a safety thing for his child. The turning point of this whole relationship was when the father began giving me hugs. He would hug me while I was holding his baby, as I was leaving to go home, etc. These hugs would only occur in private or if his wife's work door was closed. They were long, intimate, and he would breathe in my neck as I stood there paralyzed. Then he began following me out when I would take the baby on walks, attempting to hug me in the parks, hold my hand while I was walking and asking inappropriate questions that he could not ask in his house. He asked me if I was a good girl or a bad girl, in which I told him I was uncomfortable. He then begged me to keep our conversations to myself. When I went home that afternoon the text messages began. He would text me inappropriate emojis, photos, you name it. All of this became too much for me and the following day I came home early from the baby and I's daily walks to talk to the mom. I showed her the texts, the photos, the phone calls, and summarized how her husband was following me to the parks and out on walks. Before I could finish my conversation with her, the father came in the door, after looking for me in the park and not finding me, and our conversation ended there. I went home early needless to say, and she called me that afternoon to let me know that I am fired and they will no longer be needing me, and I cannot attend their baby's first birthday party. So my question is, what do I do now? Do I report the father to the nannying agency? Do I file for unemployment? Do I have another conversation with the mother? This happened so fast and I'm still kind of in denial that this happened to me and I lost my job for simply being honest. Should I cancel a $5,000 B-day trip over this behavior from my BF? I think he may propose. I was invited on a wonderful trip for my birthday by my boyfriend of 8 months. He and I have had our ups and downs but, as of late, things have been really good. He is spending thousands to take me to Hawaii for 6 days but I own my own business, I do work remotely, so I told him that I need to do some work if I'm going to be out of state, with Zoom calls etc. He is quite successful in business, more than me, and he thinks he knows better than me. He tells me to let them all know I'm taking a vacation and I will be out of pocket for most of the week. My clients only talk to me. I have contract workers to do some of the upkeep but they talk with me and they pay me hefty retainers. I told him I didn't feel comfortable saying I was taking 7 days off and that I would need to work a few hours a day remotely. He disagrees and I can tell it's been a point of contention. I am at the point of fearing this vacation and wanting to back out of going. I know he has spent 3500 already but it is refundable if he cancels soon. I haven't said anything about cancelling yet but it's deep in my gut. On top of this, last week I went on a work trip and I made amazing connections that could lead to huge growth and contracts and losing that traction and workflow will be detrimental to my business. My BF has already told me he feels very uncomfortable with the man, colleague, who set up those meetings for me because I posted about my collaboration with him on social media. In addition, while I was on the trip my boyfriend had major meltdowns texting and repeatedly calling me during my meetings saying that he was no appreciative of the fact that I didn't respond to his texts within the typical 30 minutes that I normally do. I literally texted him once during the meeting and said I'm still in this meeting, may I please call you when I get out in 30 minutes. 
He called right back two times and I walked out and told him that I stepped out to take his call and he was yelling at me for being unreachable. I said how am I unreachable when I texted you back and literally walked out of important meetings to take this call. That didn't really help. He ranted and raved for a while, and I finally had to say I don't deserve this, I'm working my ass off and this is very intense and there is a lot of pressure. This is a lot of complaining and I apologize in advance but I am sick to my stomach over this decision. I love this man and when we are together things are so good. But I don't feel safe to go on this trip for six days and give up the progression of my baziness. I see it a couple of ways, I think it's possible he will propose to me on this trip. If things were going well in his book, and I also think it's possible that he will be extremely ticked off if I take business calls on this trip, and it will cause fights, and it's six days out of state and way outside my normal time zone. I'd appreciate any feedback you might have. Aunt wrote Amy, a really awful birthday card and I feel bad now. My mom has a cousin that happens to live close by to us. My mom's family is from a big city and it's just her and my aunt who now live in a small town very far away from family. My mom's cousin, my sister and I just call her our aunt. Well my aunt has lived in this town 40 years but my mom has for only 20. Anyways growing up my mom was a stay at home mom and my aunt was a teacher. My aunt retired 3 years ago and at that time my mom went back to school and started working as a dialysis nurse. My mom works really hard hours especially not being in the healthiest condition. Anyways, today was my birthday and my aunt has never really given me gifts until 4 or 5 years ago. I'm the type of person that just likes being told happy birthday, not given gifts. So this morning I woke up to one happy birthday text from my mom and all I got from her is I'm leaving my last gift for you on the porch. That's it. No happy birthday or nothing. So I thought oh maybe she is coming by to say happy birthday or something. Nope. My mom and I went to lunch and when we come home there was a target bag on the porch looking almost like it was chucked out a car window. I pick it up and it's got a card and a tube of exploded lotion. So I go inside and open the card to sure enough it was my gift. Now weeks prior to this my aunt told me she was going to stop giving me gifts because I will have turned 19 and she does that with everyone. I was like okay understandable. But she kept on repeating it. So in the card she left, this is your last birthday gift because you are 19. No happy birthday or nothing. The card wasn't even a birthday card. I know this may seem stupid but I cried this hurt my feelings. I asked my mom why my aunt did this and apparently it's because my mom didn't have time to go to coffee with her the other day because she had work and it's like my aunt doesn't understand that and is taking it out on me. My feelings are hurt because I always help her out without anything in return and this just feels insulting. Problem with colleague, struggling to remain civil. I have a history I am not entirely proud of. When I was 17 I made some friends that introduced me to drug use. At the height of my addiction it was nothing for 10 plus people to be passed out and my floor drugs everywhere and random fucking. I met my husband. 36, during this time and ended up pregnant after two years kicking off us getting clean and me getting my MBA. I am your average brunette from southern Alabama. I'm 5 feet 4 inches and about 120 pounds I'm married and have three children. I have an MBA, and manage a small hospital. My husband is 5 feet 11 inches has several tattoos he got before the kids came along, pretty average black man very sexy but I may be a bit biased since he is mine. He has a string of felonies from the height of addiction but since then we've both been clean and on our best behavior. He works construction. The issue is my boss recently hired a woman mid-late thirties, that was at first friendly. She manages the nursing home next to the hospital and since both are owned by the same company, we see each other quite often. Last week I had to go to the office to send an email and grab some things I need to work on. I brought my babies with me since I wouldn't be there more than an hour. I have done this often, a lot of us do, 
it isn't an issue. She came by to chat for a moment and noticed my children so I introduced her to them. She made a face and said I didn't know your children were like that. I was confused thinking maybe she thought they were being rude or something since they just said hi and got back to what they were doing. I asked her what she meant and she whispered they are mixed. I told her I was well aware, they are my children. Anyway she left quickly and I just finished up what I had to do and we went home. The next time I saw her she had pulled up a picture of my husband and his police record. I told her I am aware of my husband's record, I was there and it isn't any of her business. The next day I got pulled for a random drug test, obviously passed, we've been clean for a long time. I asked my boss what was up and he just said that the other manager had thrown a fit that I was working there and with my history. He wanted to pull the rug out from under her and she will be replaced soon since she has done this to a few other people as well. However now she is back to being fake friendly and trying to come in my office and chat every time she sees me. I am no longer comfortable even speaking to her and honestly her shit pissed me off. Now for the time being I have to be civil and I'm not really good at being civil in these kinds of scenarios. She not only has a problem with me and tried to make me lose my job, but she also brought my husband into it and had the nerve to bring up her BS in front of my children.